With great joy, we invite you to be in the presence of Arya Maharishi Kapri Timaya during the 10-day Presence Immersive happening in Goa in December 2024. To know more, to register and to make your travel plans, click the link in the description below. Maharishika ji, uh, recently there has been a controversy about the uh, Tirupati Laddu allegedly containing uh, animal fat, which many of us see as an uh, attack on the sanctity of uh, Sanatan Dharma practices. In Tirupati, uh, when the devotees visit, go for darshan, usually they receive a Laddu. And in the history of the temple, it was never tested for anything. But recent, there was a government change and uh, the sitting chief minister asked to take the sample of the laddus and they found fish oil, animal fat in those laddus in Prasad. And uh, my question was why these attacks are happening and how they can be stopped. Tirupati is the largest temple in India in terms of the number of devotees that go there and it has been like that for very very long actually the thing is that these you know the temples of india they are hubs of community life where people expressed sanatani culture where sanatani education happened there was dance taught in the temples there was music taught in the temple sanskrit was taught in the temples the Ramayana and the Mahabharata were staged in the temples. And traditionally, these temples were managed by local Hindu communities. And the funds that devotees donated were used for the community welfare, like to build schools and to build hospitals. And then when the British came to India, they realized that these temples had significant economic and social influence and also substantial revenues because they owned vast amounts of land and they received continuously a lot of donations. It was very rich, the subcontinent itself. It was the wealthiest economy in the world at that point. So they they took over the temples, especially in the south of India, and they made laws that took away the power from the local institutions and gave them to the British government and when India then got its independence in 1947 there were a few years when this was all where the temples were not yet in the charge of the government and then in the early 50s they started taking over and soon there were many states especially in the south that took over completely but this was only done for the Hindu temples it wasn't done for the mosques and the churches even till today so the Hindus were basically under the government and everyone else could do what they wanted. In the Hindu temples, the, the deity is considered to be alive and conscious. So if something happens in a temple and the deity has to be represented in court, it is seen as a person in court. It is treated by the law as a person, the deity. And so the government came along and said, well, if it is a person, then it has to pay income tax. So, temples pay income tax because the deity is alive. It's, it's, I mean, the Hindus have really had to put up with quite something and they've held through till now. The problem is that all this financial exploitation has resulted in, in the complete cultural erosion of Hindu traditions, ancient knowledge in all these temples. A state like Goa has temples that are perfectly maintained, beautifully maintained, cultural centers, dance happens, music happens, all of this happens because temples have never been in the hands of the government. And it even goes against the Indian constitution and 1.2 billion people who are Hindus are unable to defend their culture against this government interference. So, this has been going on, it's uh, over a hundred thousand temples that are in the hands of the government and then you have governments like a communist government that controls these temples or you have a government which is openly against Hinduism, a state government that is also controlling the temples. So, 
if the state decides everything, if it dictates how many times a temple has to do puja in a day, how many times in a week bhajans have to be sung, how many kirtans have to be conducted, they even decide who is supposed to do the pujas and how the puja has to be performed. And then they decide who makes the prasad, which is the, the laddu, which is given after being offered to the deity, to the people. So it's the government and government bodies that decide these things. And so they open tenders and vendors have to come in and make applications. And all of this is going on where the local communities, the local priests, no one has a say in anything. So obviously, things like this are going to happen at some point. Because the temples do not belong in the hands of the government. They are the center of culture, of Sanatani Hindu culture, and they should be with the people, with the local people and local institutions. And that's the reason why all of this has happened. So it's time for the Hindus of Bharat Varsh to stand up and stop this nonsense and wrench the temples away from the government with whatever means there are at their disposal. It is an attack on Sanatana Dharma, which means it's an attack on freedom, because Sanatana Dharma stands for freedom. You are invited to a live online satsang with Maharishi Kapriti this Sunday. To know more, click the link in the description below. With great joy, we invite you to be in the presence of Arya Maharishi Kapriti Maya during the 10-day Presence Immersive Happening in Goa in December 2024. To know more, to register and to make your travel plans, click the link in the description below.